This video is of the Alice Chalmers Model 410 Pull Type Chisel Plow. Uh, what you're looking at here is the prototype, which is uh, completed and finished, of the 13 foot 13 shank model. There are a total of eight additional uh, copies of this particular toy in the series, and they're all numbered and signed. And the purpose of this video is to demonstrate to those who purchased the toy uh, how it looks uh, as opposed to photographs and how it operates. In the first instance, I'll just take you through the toy quite briefly. It's uh, mostly made of brass and, uh, and some aluminum with fully functioning uh, parts uh, that make up the toy, just like the real one. Uh, it is uh, measures across the back of it for those who uh, may be looking at, the, at for display purposes and putting on, on shelves. I'll put a ruler across the back of it here. It measures about uh, 10, still over 10 inches in width. So for shelf and display purposes, that gives you an idea what uh, what this is. Uh, if you are displaying this toy, I uh, with these, um, I should get my hand out of the way, I apologize for that. I may be doing this several times by mistake, is you'll see how sharp the, the shanks are on this toy. And these are being a white sweep shovel. Uh, I use these on other models as well, only because there's so many to pick from, and this is, looks like a real, it looks very nice on a, on, a, on any toy that wide sweeps. But, but the point I want to get to here is that they're very sharp and pointy, as they are brass. And uh, if you are going to put it on a, a, a surface that's, that may scratch, such as a glass or some woods, uh, you may want to just put something underneath it so that it prevents any damage to, to, to your display uh, display shelf. Um, the the toy you see right now is in the locked upward position and I will take you uh, momentarily here to how this works once hooked up to a tractor. I will just simply stop my uh, video here at the moment and uh, hook a tractor to this and take you through how uh, the uh, this, this chisel plow operates. For this part of the, uh, the video, the, uh, this Alice Chalmers chisel plow is actually hooked up to an International Harvester 1026 Gold Demonstrator Wheatland Edition uh, in 1 16th scale, of course. Uh, it looks not too bad for a non-Alice Chalmers toy with this, uh, uh, with this uh, chisel plow. The, uh, the reason I have an International is I don't exactly have an Alice Chalmers in my collection at the moment, but I will admit from what I've seen online, uh, this would probably be a great looking, uh, called the chisel plow behind, say, the Alice Chalmers D21 in different variations, as well as the Alice Chalmers 220, which is about period correct uh, for this, this particular toy. I'll take you through the, the, uh, the cultivator and how it operates from uh, front to back. First of all, over here, uh, I've measured off from the, from the center of this draw bar to the ground is on this particular toy and another one that I have, which is another international, is about 10 and a quarter inches to 10 and, th to, sorry, one and a quarter inches to one and three sixteenths. And um, so f what this translates to on the toy itself is the clevis is put at the fourth hole. Now I do have another test toy that I use around here, which is the uh, inter uh, Case uh, 1570. It's a much bigger tractor, wider, taller tires on it. And if you're using a, a tractor of that size, uh, you're going to go right to the very top hole. Uh, this uh, chisel plow, for its time and place in agricultural uh, history, was uh, used for a very big tractor at the time, about 130 to 100, maybe 150 horsepower uh, range. And uh, so something as big as a Case 1570 was, was, was not yet uh, when this thing was made and uh, is a bit bit heavier on the horsepower side, so to speak. So uh, it's something to be mindful of if, if for display purposes is to just watch your hitch height. This is adjustable and, and can be done if you like. Here we have the replica of the spring-loaded uh, hose, uh, hydraulic hose uh, holder. This is clamped here, and so you don't see the hose on there at the moment because, of course, the toy is not finished. But there's two pieces of metal. I mean, I'll just spin it around. You can just see right there. Yeah, so then once I, 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 I get it together, I bolt this top bolt down and then put some touch-up paint on top and then it's it's all, all completed. Uh, moving to the hydraulic cylinder, um, this is an interesting system. It This this 
this chisel plow was made by a Texas company called Jeff Roy, J-E-O-F-F-R-O-Y. It's a short line supplier to Alice Chalmers for this model, uh, which came out in the late 1960s. And uh, it's different in color. It's uh, it's yellow and green, not John Deere yellow and yellow and green. As a matter of fact, of the eight units I've made, uh, one is going to one is a chase unit, and it will be done in the Jeff Roy colors. And again, it's it's spoken for. Uh, I, I, I guess uh, the next point I want to get to is that it's a really well built chisel plow. I mean, when I do toys, and I'll go look at older equipment and see what's left of them and, and measure them up so I can replicate them. You can see where the weld pieces are, where the weak spots were over time. And from the toys, I, from the real ones I've, I've found of this particular model, um, it's you know, not, not a lot of weld welding um, uh, repair areas on this. So it's pretty solid design. Um, to set your, your, your level as uh, front to back, as well as side to side, is actually quite manual on this design. For instance, up here on the hydraulic ram, this is a this is movable, so you have, again help work with your locking bar to set the optimum uh, height and and level on it. So this up in here, there's you set this movable uh, this aluminum arm that you can see here. I'm, I'm I'm playing with on the bottom. There's several holes and you adjust it. So I have this adjust pre-adjusted to to where it sits, which works hand in hand with this adjustable bar. This bar is very simply made. Um, if you go into the manual, it is all done with uh, bolts. Uh, there's no fancy uh, locking pins or anything like that. So uh, what I'm going to do while this, this, this toy is up is I'm going to pull this bolt right here, the safety bolt, and just lower it like so. And I'll put this over here. Show sure what it looks like when it's sitting uh, level on uh, behind, a, behind a tractor. Um, I'll go to the next part here just so I can manipulate and move the, the, the cultivator around to show you different angles of it and, and what it looks like. I'll stop here for one moment. In this last part, I just, uh, in preparation of it, I removed the tractor and I, and I put the locking bar, locked it back up again and turned the uh, chisel plow around so you can see the back end of it. Um, we talked about in the second part how you could get level front to back. But in this design, there's also a side to side this way. And how that's done is a solid metal bar in the real one fitting into a, a metal sleeve over here. And I hope the camera can pick this up. It'll do, I'll try to get a bit closer here to my tripod. And um, and normally I, when, when my parents farmed, if you bought a new piece of equipment back in the seventies, you would set it up for your field conditions. You were pretty much good to go for the life of the piece of equipment or the, pro, or the uh, land you were farming at the time. And in this case, I've set up this call to, this chisel plow rather in this way. There are two adjusting bolts here and a set bolt in here. And this actually can move up and down. So I'm gonna just lift this up here a bit and see if I, if I can just get this closer for you. This adjusting bolt and these two set bolts. This has been set to level already. As uh, those I've purchased it already, I've, I've advised them via email that I highly recommend leaving this alone because if you start messing with it, you will chip the paint and uh, we'll need some some paint to touch up and repair. But it is set uh, nice and parallel and level as you can see, like so. Um, I, I would also want to just put out uh, how these shanks are made. Uh, there's a lot more complexity than what, than what meets the eye. This is actually a shank that's sandwiched between two plates. And these two plates are, are bolted to the frame using two U-bolts. But the front of the shank has a hole in it. So what you have is a, a nut and a bolt right there to help hold it on. It's just, it replicates the real one exactly. And I'll just turn this upside down here. And hopefully we can show you that it, it gets quite busy and how uh, these are all bolted to, uh, to the frame. One area that I, I was took a lot of time to build is actually right here where the locking bar, the locking bar base uh, that it goes into, which is on the frame. Four bolts. It, uh, one is one is simply a clamp system, and the other here is a, a bolts onto a um, an L type frame. It's right. It's it's quite an interesting thing, but very well built. I mean, uh, the ones I've seen. Uh, years and decades later, nothing is broken or cracked on it. So you can tell it's a really well-made design. 
Um, I'll now just put this down in the, and I should point out one more thing before I put it in the down position. This is really uh, to maneuver around if you're, if you're putting inside your, your uh, uh, display cabinet or to, to a show if you like even. It's a fairly uh, robust, fairly stable design and uh, but it just replicates the real one and and, and credit goes to the engineers at uh, Jeff Roy back in the late 19, back in the 1960s for for production by um, by I believe around 68 69 somewhere in that uh, in that period um, this is a, a it'll be finished in in Alice Chalmers Persian orange uh, with very early version be white shanks black shovels and uh, let's go move this bolt here a bit better. Again, very basic design. Matter of fact, I'm going to, do, I'm going to take this out right now. Just drop the wheels all together. Because what if you decide to show this um, in a display case alone, you can see how nice and level that will sit. Now, if you do, and I will lock this up again, just please bear with me. Uh, we'll just put this bolt back in this hole here, like so. Uh, if you do set it in your display case, it is nose heavy, which is pretty typical for a lot of disc cultivator and chisel plow designs of the period. Uh, I know the ones that we had, if we all hooked it from the tractor, you had to have a block or wood or two just to keep it up so you can pull away from it. So it's, again, uh, just like the real one, how it would sit. Uh, I, like I say, this is a really nice toy, 303 pieces. So there's a lot going on here, very well made, as I've said earlier, and uh, was a lot of, a lot of fun to make. This is a really interesting piece. I do want to point out that for those that may wish to, I'll put this to the side for one second over here. Now, those that may wish to uh, have the manual, the operator's manual to accompany their display. This is what uh, this toy is based off of. This uh, version of the manual was released on in uh, April 69, according to the date code on the bottom. A lot of how to operate and maneuver this particular toy, I'll just quickly go to this here is on pages six, uh, seven, and eight. And it tells you how the hydraulic ramp works and how it's movable. And it also goes into how the uh, leveling side to side and your depth and uh, is, is done. Uh, unlike today's modern equipment, which is high electro, highly electronic and or, high, and or hydraulic, uh, this was designed in, different, in a different time and place. Um, that's all I have on this particular toy. Uh, this was, a, this is my, this is the prototype, which will stay in my collection. And I hope that you found, uh, this video helpful, especially the ones that purchased them, just so you can see in, in a more, uh, realistic setting in, in a video, as opposed to a uh, photograph of what this toy looks like and, and what you can expect in the coming weeks behind the camera is all other, uh, all eight other, uh, toys and all in parts as they get ready to head into the uh, paint booth for, for priming and painting. Uh, thank you very much and hope you enjoyed this video.